Hey everyone, Chris here from Drift Outfitters. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be tying with you a peeping caddis jig. This is one of my favorite early spring flies. We're coming close to trout season now, so I thought it'd be appropriate to tie us. Let's jump into it. To start this fly, I'm going to be tying on a Dohiku jig hook in a size 12. And this bead is a three and a half millimeter tungsten slotted bead in gold. I'll tie this fly in smaller sizes as well, all the way down to a 16 typically, and down bead sizes to about three millimeter. As I say, this is usually a higher water spring pattern for me, uh, with its larger size and brighter colors. So I typically do tie it in a larger size range than I typically would some other flies. To start, I'm going to take a, a ten thousandths of an inch lead wire and make about three turns just behind the bead head here. I'll break both ends off and push this up against the bead to hold it in place. Okay, and with that in place I'm going to take my thread. This is a 10 uh Vivas in a rusty brown color and I'll start it just behind that wire and then bring that up over top of that lead wire to hold it in place. I'll then take wraps down the shank to the bend of the hook to form a thread base and cut off my remaining thread here. Now for the tail, this is made of a micro-sized ultra chenille in fluorescent chartreuse. And to prep this material, what I'm going to do is take a lighter. I'm actually going to singe the end of this chenille here until it curls up for me like that and I get that little brown tip. I'm going to tie this in off the back and the length I'm looking for here is quite short. It's about half the length of the shank or even a little bit less. Place that at the back here, make a loose wrap to catch it and then a few more tight wraps to secure. Like so. And you can see it's a very very short tail I have going there. I'm then going to take wraps up the bend here, keeping that chenille on top until I get to about where my lead wire is and I'll cut the remainder off. And that's just to build up a nice evenly, um, evenly sized body for the fly. Now for the rib on this fly I'm going to be using a small gold wire. I'll be catching that in just on the near side, pulling it into length and then wrapping my thread rearwards over top of that wire until I get back to where the tail is. The body on this fly is a dark hair's ear blend. You can use other colors of hair's ear as well. My preference is uh, definitely with the darker shades, but the lighter natural colors will also work. I'm going to dub some on here, and I'm trying to keep this dubbing noodle quite thin, with just enough dubbing to coat this shank. I don't want to build up a, a very large body here. With that, I'll start applying it just back where the tail was, and then start bringing it forwards. Again, just trying to cover that underbody. There we are. And then for the rib, we'll start counter wrapping this rib over the body. And we're looking for about four turns of wire through the body. Like so. I'm then going to cross my thread around the wire and use that wire as an anchor point to start wrapping my thread counter to its original direction and then using the wire after I have a few turns on there to again reverse the direction of my thread and start wrapping forwards again. This will more securely uh, secure my counter wrapped wire here. I'll then wind the, the wire until it breaks off. Now the collar on this fly is a natural partridge and what I'm going to do to prep this feather is just strip off the fluffier bits off the base of the feather and then tie it in in around the midway mark on that hackle. I'm tying this with the convex side of the feather facing myself so it curves back toward the fly. When I start wrapping it, I'll slope back toward the tail. I'll then come in and snip the tip of the feather off. When I start wrapping this hackle, I'm going to use my fingers to draw the fibers back into the fly. And all I'm looking for here is about one full turn of that hackle. 
anymore and it will start to get a little dense and won't sink as well for you. Once that's tied in, snip away the butt end of that feather and then I'm just going to add a very small additional bit of that dubbing to cover up those thread wraps. Like so. Throw on a whip finish. And that is your peeping caddis. So there you have it, your peeping caddis jig. Thanks for joining us today and watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our channel. All materials that we tied with today are available on the Drift Outfitters online web store if you are in need of anything. Any questions that you may have or comments, please feel free to reach out to us via email or visit us in the store. Until next time, see you then.